everyone, and welcome to another episode of Cosmos with Cosmos. As always, I'm Mike. I'm Liz. And that's all. It's, it's just us today. Brandon is on assignment yet again. Yet again, and where it's really cold, though. Oh, he's going he's, he's gonna to die. I mean, there there are he's negative not. numbers. Negative numbers in there. I don't know if he's going to make it back. It's, uh, I imagine him as like uh, that's the scene of... Jack Nicholson in The Shining, where he's frozen to death in the in the in the maze, yeah. the hedge maze. Yeah, uh, that's what Brandon's gonna look like. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, anyway. <laughs> today's episode: space viruses. Yeah. Yeah. Because you know, I, I was thinking about this, and uh, I was thinking about all the science fiction out there. You know, and there's you know tons of alien encounters, right? Um, oh, we might have been uh, watching maybe like a drunk history where this came to me. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember. But uh, I'm I'm uh, I'm thinking about you know that n- no science fiction really addresses the fact that when we come in contact with another species uh, uh, from a different world and planet, well, I, I, that species is going to be host to so many different viruses. And, you know, and then our viruses and then uh, our bacteria. Because just think about when white people met anybody of color. (laughs) Or the people of color ended up dying. (laughs) Well, we'll get into that. In various ways. But, you know, some of that from, you know, their immune systems, you know, weren't ready to encounter these jerks from abroad. So what's going to happen when our immune systems... jerks from abroad? Is that what you're saying? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) All right, we'll get, we'll get into that. Yes, but I know. First, I'm setting the stage. Oh, yeah, you said it beautifully. You said it beautifully. <laughs> but before we get into all of that, the stage has been set. A um, couple of drinking rules. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, well, actually, no, I'm sorry. I didn't do social media. You threw me. You Or our drink names or anything. Yeah, all right. What are you drinking? <laughs> Clearly, we're a little rusty. Uh, this episode. This is what happens around. when you take a week off. Yeah. Um, I... Am uh am drinking the space pox. Space pox. Space pox. Space What's pox are delicious. There's orange juice, cranberry juice, vodka, amaretto. Mm-hmm. And yeah, that's good. And that's good. That's all that's <laughs> in it. So space pox. I mean, I don't recommend it maybe for everybody because, uh, but I've built up an immune yeah. tolerance, uh, <laughs> so I can handle it. But you know, other people might die. I'm thinking that a lot of people that um. That watch watch our show have built up immunity to it, and, and they're they're good with space box. Um, what are you drinking? I am drinking the uh, Solkovsky infection, which is um, straight out of Star Trek, where hey. um, there were a couple of episodes in Star Trek where uh, you know the crew got drunk, but then they were able to touch somebody and they would get drunk too. That's so a, that's really I figured, convenient. I figure you yeah. only need you just need like the designated drinker, basically. That's true, and, and then you know nobody else has to kill their livers. You just yeah. rotate, maybe. Yeah, people. yeah. The only the only problem is is that um, uh, you know when uh, engineers, ship engineers, get it, they they tend to shut off like uh, you know things that you need to survive. Oh, yeah. well, don't give it to them. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> They're the designated drivers. That's great. That's great. Um, all right, so be sure to um, follow us on all the things follow, Twitter, like, Drinking Cosmos, and Insta, with, and pr- everything else Cosmos with Cosmos. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like us, follow us, uh, tell your friends about it, um, you know, all that kind of good stuff. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We have rules. The first one is probably most likely going to happen dog barks. Oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> we are expecting Amazon to come today at some yep. point, so... <laughs> uh, yeah, so the, the dogs probably will be barking, and of course, anytime there's a Star Wars reference, we should suspend that, because we are going to talk about Star Wars today, and Star Trek. We, That's we are, true. So, Lord That's of the Rings true. reference. Only Lord of the Rings. Rings. Lord of the Rings. Dog references. barks and Lord of the Rings. All right, so uh, before we actually get started into the little things, let's talk about a big thing. Oh, big thing, big thing. Yeah, because the last time we were here, um, it was a James James, um, Webb Space Telescope recap. Yeah, tongue twisters all over the place. Yes, Um, and um, here in the past week, it's actually made it to L2, Um, so it's where it's supposed to be, so we thought we'd give it just a real quick um, update. So, um, James Webb got to L2 on um, January 24th, around 2 p.m. 
Eastern Time. Um, so that was um, one o'clock for for Jack. It was noon for us and for eleven o'clock for Oregon. So we got the whole country covered in the times. Okay. If you if you're not in the U.S. Well, you, you got you got to figure it out from there. But anyway. I love it. <laughs> wow, going after that. Okay. <laughs> All right, so, oh, man, what are you doing? All right, so um, the first star it's going to look at Ooh. is HD 84406. Cool. Yeah, it's a G-type star in Ursa Major. Oh. Yes, and it's the, the only purpose for looking at the star is to gather engineering data and to begin aligning the mirrors. I, I want to know how they chose the star. Did they have a list of candidates? Uh, were they looking for specific requirements of the star? Yeah, they took resumes. <laughs> Put it on Indeed. <laughs> yeah. It took Stella resume. And like, man, you know. <laughs> yeah. This one, this one seems good. This guy seems, seems, seems pretty chill. All right. So, in case you're wondering, um, James Webb is now 907,530.5 miles from Earth. Oh, it's out there. Yeah, it's out there, yeah. Mm, Almost a million its own. miles. It's on its own. Just going at 451.8 miles per hour. Now, in case you're wondering, that is 20,197.3 Skittles per second. Oh, wow. It's not Skittles. That it flies fast. It's pretty quick. Or I should say a lot of Skittles. Um, the temperature at um, James Webb is 55 degrees. Um, so you have the hot side and cold uh -huh, side. Uh -huh. 55 degrees in the um, spacecraft equipment panel, 125 out at the sun shield. And on the cold side, it's well, minus. That's the warm side. That's the warm side. Okay. The cold side, did I call it the cold side? No, no. <clears throat> yeah, the cold side is minus 348 at the primary mirror. Uh, minus 333 at the instrument radiator. Or as we are finding out, it's the temperature at Jack's place. So, because <laughs> he had wow. a whole conversation wow. going on about I, it. And we can't ignore this beautiful pun, uh, star linked in. Star what? LinkedIn for the just for oh, resumes. Star yeah. LinkedIn. Star LinkedIn. <laughs> like it. Like you know who not appreciate it? Brandon. No. Go on a rant right now. But he's not here. So no. we don't have to deal with he's that. He's on assignment. He might be he might be listening. But um Yeah, nice little pause for him. All right, let's get into it. Let's yeah, talk about shit. Let's talk about space viruses. Space viruses. Because we we have a lot of viruses and bacteria and stuff here. Oh, God, there's a lot of viruses. I mean, you still need to, like, if like if we were going to travel to, like, Africa or India or something, don't you still have to get shots? Yeah. Because, you know, there's shit you haven't been exposed to yet or, or yeah, you you gotta built go. up anything or gotten vaccinated for, so you got to get your shots. Yeah, I know. At, at least for Africa, you do. And that's just interacting with other humans on the same planet. <laughs> You know what? In all honesty, you got to get your shot just to deal with your neighbor down the street. You got to get your COVID shot. Yeah, so, you gotta, um, because you got to get boosted. Because your neighbor that hasn't gotten a shot yet. So, um, so yeah, I mean, they're all over the place here on Earth. Mm -hmm. You got to deal with them. So, what are viruses? Yeah, small, angry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, they are. All right, yeah, so they are, they're. Small microscopic parasite, parasites, right? Smaller than bacteria. Are they parasites? You know what? I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure I knew exactly what a virus uh, is, other than it being a virus. Yeah, well, in my research, it said that they were parasitic. Cool. <laughs> so, um, I mean, they behave very, very you know, parasitic. You know what? This is, we, this is where we should have had your mom and my mom as um, guests. For this because episode. they know medical things and biology things. Yeah, and we yeah. could say, hey, um, why don't you guys talk about viruses and we'll just sit here and drink and watch you. Yeah. <laughs> and, and we'll try to learn something. All right, so these small parasites, but I mean, they don't know what they're doing. They're just trying to live their lives. They're yeah. just trying to live and grow and evolve like all species on Earth. That is true. But they kill us. They do kill us uh, or make us very sick. Mm -hmm. um, and so basically they can't thrive or reproduce outside of a host. So when they're just kind of floating around. I mean, that sounds like an alien movie right there, really, oh. if you think about it. I mean. Yeah, there's so much. Pregnancy, that alone is already an alien movie. That really movie. is a parasite. I mean, yeah. Uh, they, they contain both DNA and, uh, and RNA, but lack the ability to read the DNA and act on it. 
So they can have that DNA in them, but uh-huh. they don't have anything that actually reads the DNA to create proteins and things like that, oh. which you need, which happens in cells. Okay, like, like bacteria. we have stuff that's like, well, okay, I can read this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they can't read the code. So what they have to do is they got to infect a cell and have that cell read that code for the, the virus and reproduce it. I'm sure this that somebody's why, going to correct me if I'm wrong. This is why literacy is important. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Yes, it is. Education. And scientific literacy is also important. Yes. Um, all right. So I I always thought they were called viruses, no matter what. Okay. Oh, no. Is it a virus I situation? No. Um, virus C? So a virus, Viruses? a virus that is completely assembled and ready for infection. Which, oh, is it Legos? I yeah. um, <laughs> is called a a virion. A virion. Yeah. Oh, oh! If I read for enough down in the notes, I would have made my drink in vi- uh, uh, the virion. Vi- the virion, because that's way cooler than space box. Well, it's good to know that you read the notes. <laughs> At least somebody prepared, sort of. Look, I am the. Uh, <laughs> it's like a. It's like the dollop. <laughs> Well then, I'm the one that doesn't know what's going on, <laughs> and it's just flying by the seat of my pants. It'd be great if we could have them on the show. Yeah, anyway, <laughs> anyway. All right, so a virion has um, an inner nucleic acid core. This is where all the D- the DNA stuff is. Oh, okay, so it's a little DNA pocket layer. Yeah, DNA layer. things they're right there, um, and that's surrounded by an outer casing of protein called a capsid. Okay, like, because it's encapsulating it? Yeah, sure. Um, um, and then some even have um, an additional layer around it. A little it. buffer, a little extra Yeah, shield. and that envelope, that, that third envelope, if these viruses are lucky enough to have it, um, usually are derived from the cell's membrane, so it's harder for the cell to know that's a foreign object. Sneaky, sneaky little, little bastard. assholes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. He's just put on a disguise. Yep. Yeah. It just uh. Sneaky bastards are they? So the capsid actually protects the nucleic core from the host cells' uh, uh, nucleic an enzyme that could actually break apart that nucleic acid of the virus. So um, that capsid performs a very important function, but. God, I wish it wasn't there. Man. Yeah. So the question is, is how do these guys infect somebody? How does it happen? Well, um, they need to uh, they need to have access to the body. Well, I would think so. That's yeah. generally uh, so, important. <laughs> so any kind of cuts that you might have on your body, I don't I don't have one that I can point to. Oh, I got one. I got one today. Yeah, she's got one. So any cuts on your body, uh-huh. viruses can get into it. Uh, um, I can feel. From, I can feel the infection starting. Yeah, you can feel it, can you? Um, insect bites. Um, a lot of uh, oh, like mosquitoes and malaria. Yeah, a lot of viruses get transmitted that way. Um, and then also, um, uh, breathing it in does just Yay. quite nicely. Um, and so yeah, so huh. so that's step mm-hmm. one. Um, step two is they then need to attach to a cell. Inside your body. I feel like there's a lot of cells to choose from. Oh, there, there's a lot. Uh, it's like just right there for the There are a lot of cells. Like, however, it'd be hard to miss. There are a lot of cells. However, um, that virus needs a specific receptor on top of a cell um, to be able to get into the cell. And so not all cells have the same receptors on, on, on the membrane. Oh, so okay. there might be billions and trillions of cells in your body. It doesn't uh-huh. mean that the virus is going to be able to. Okay. Get into every it's one like, of those. It's like looking for a triangle and a sea full of square receptors. Yeah, but it, they seem to be pretty good at finding those triangles. <laughs> um, and this allows them to move into the cell. And once into the cell, it re- releases its genetic material, and the host cell starts replicating the viruses. It sounds a lot like... What? What does it sound like? Like cell rape. <laughs> <laughs> Microscopic cell rape. Yeah, it's cell rape and murder is what it is. Wow. Yeah, so the cell starts making all these um, all these little 
viruses all over the place, but all the viruses are still in the cell. Uh So the only way they get out is rupture the cell and and then they go out. Uh, yeah, my mom. My mom says all those people who wear their mask below their nose. You're it's yeah. Pointless. Hey, you're just asking for cell rape. <laughs> you're asking for it. Okay. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't use okay. uh, cell rape as uh, anymore. anymore. Um, all right. It's over anyway, right now. But. But yeah, I mean, yeah. So the the virus then uh, spreads throughout throughout the body, mm-hmm. throughout the host. And eventually spreads to other hosts through such things as sneezing, which I actually did quite a bit today. Yeah, you but were I really did cover my mouth. Um, <laughs> Even you, yeah. So cover your damn mouth and wear a fucking mask. Above the nose. And yeah, cover wear the mask. encapsulating the lower half of your face. I, yeah, we see people basically with um, uh, ma- uh, chin diapers. Yeah. It's basically what it is all the time with the mask down below, mm-hmm. down, not even covering the mouth. It's, like, yeah. it, it's pointless. All right, so how do we discover these things? Yeah, because they're real tiny. <laughs> they are tiny, and the size actually is the problem. And no. um, yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> All right, so a measles, uh, a measles virus. Okay. Measles virus. A measle. One measle. <laughs> one one measle. Can you have one measle? <laughs> well, one virus what of the measles, measles? Um, is only two hundred and twenty nanometers. Which is about eight times smaller than an E. coli bacteria. Hepatitis. All, oh, I'm sorry. I just let me pause for a second. All of these things you're about to say with these numbers and these comparisons mean nothing in my brain. Right. Other than it's really small. I can't. I can't. Yeah. I can't. Well, hopefully. Can't visualize it. Hopefully we can. We. If you let me say a few more, oh. then we can might get to something that might help you visualize okay. it a All little right. bit. All right. So you predicted my mental anguish and. Well, provide but, a solution. But I don't know how good I am with okay. it. All right, oh so God. hepatitis is 45 nanometers, um, which is 40 times smaller than an E. coli bacteria. Polio. Polio is eradicated. Yeah, it's it? eradicated. Yep. Um, 30 With nanometers. Vaccines. <laughs> which is 10,000 times smaller than a grain of salt. Wait, to polio? Polio, yeah. Is it 10,000 times, times smaller than, than a, a grain of salt? salt. We said that really well. Together. We did. That was actually really good. So everybody, go get a little grain of salt. Um, I. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah. So the thing is, is um, we need light to be able to see something in a, in a microscope, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, at least a so typical we, microscope. To see anything, we need light. That's why black holes are such, you know, assholes. <laughs> yeah. So um, the wavelength of light in order to see something mm-hmm. in a microscope the wavelength of light needs to be shorter than the object you're looking at um and so um red light has a wavelength of 700 nanometers much larger almost three times larger than a measles virus so and, wait and red light is bigger than measles yeah the wavelength of red light is bigger than a virus. I didn't realize this was going to happen in my brain when I suggested this topic. <laughs> it's bigger than a virus. Blue light is uh, only 450 nanometers, so a little bit smaller, uh-huh. but still not small enough to actually see it. You have to go down uh, much, much smaller. And the first time that we were able to see a virus, 1939, and we had to invent a microscope that doesn't use light, but instead uses electrons. Oh, well, like, uh, an electron, electron microscope. microscope. Yeah. All right. Yes. Well, that's weird and crazy, and I can't believe we've figured this shit out. Yeah, I know, right? And so, um, you know, there's a whole there's a whole long story that maybe we can get into another time about electron microscopes. But, um, um, but yeah, so those you know, things are cool and expensive. Yeah, but they but cool. it's really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, and so 1939 was the first time that we saw a uh, a virus, and it is the virus. That was, that was the first thing to actually give the name virus, even though they didn't know what the fuck it was. Yeah, so the story of that starts in the late 19th century. Oh. Yeah, so the late 1800s. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to go back in time. All right, story time <clears throat> with Mike George, fancy physics man. There was a German uh, chemist, I believe. I believe he was a German sure. chemist. Yeah, I didn't put it in notes, but he was German. Um, <laughs> Adolf Mayer. Uh, Definitely was German. A, well, definitely German. Either. Adolf or Adolf? Uh, let's let's go Adolf. <laughs> okay. Um, 
What? Yeah, let's just do that. Um, anyway, Mayer, uh, was, he was looking into this disease that was affecting um, tobacco plants, which, um, at the time, really important to have because everybody smokes. Yeah, yeah. And I mean... so um, this disease was called the mosaic disease of tobacco. Oh, that's... Yeah, and it would it would put Pretty these little yellow splotches on on the tobacco plants. Oh, that sounds not yeah. nice. <laughs> um, and so what he did was um, he he's trying to find what caused it, mm -hmm. and um, he was what he did was he took um, the tobacco vein juice, which makes me laugh. Wait, the what? <laughs> tobacco vein juice. To <laughs> tobacco so tobacco vein juice. juice yep. Cool. So I guess the tobacco leaves or something, and the uh -huh. plants have the these little veins. The juice from their veins. The right. juice from these veins. All right. Um, and he looked at it. He couldn't see anything abnormal in uh -huh. the microscope, but when he injected it into healthy plants, they got sick. So he knew that um, it was, was caused by there. the juice, the vein juice. The juice. Yeah. Um, and so and and so um, that's really as far as he got with it. But in 1892, um, Russian Dmitry Ivanov, Ivanovsky. Ivanovsky. Yeah, that's what we're going to go with. Ivanovsky. He's, he's dead. He isn't going to care. Quit looking over there. I can't. Uh, he, he tried to catch the disease in a filter. Um, Ooh, and this okay. little, like this little sieve. Yep. I'm going to net it. This little sieve uh -huh. was, um, uh, it was able to catch um, bacteria. Wow. Yeah, and so um, he didn't find... He filtered it, but didn't find anything that would um, um, explain the, oh, okay. the plants yeah. getting sick. Um, so the agent was actually smaller than the bacteria. And so then, you need to go smaller. You need to go smaller. And then Dutch scientist Martinez uh, Biergenik called it a um, called it a liquid li um, a living liquid virus, which is the first time uh, virus is actually was used to describe wow. something. Wow, I wonder where like. Like the the word virus comes from. Yeah, I don't know. I we will we'll never know. Yeah, <laughs> uh, and like I said, it was first seen in the microscope in 1939. So the the virus that caused the tobacco issues uh -huh. was the first it's one. That the was the first seen. one that was actually seen. Well, that's a nice full circle. Yeah, that's and, cool. And so, um, yeah, so really kind of cool. Uh -huh. uh, this wasn't the first time that that people were trying to. Um, um, you know, dealing with viruses, yeah. but what weren't really weren't sure what they were dealing with. Uh -huh. um, like, you know, we, we watched The Great, and, and they talk about, uh, what do they have, like smallpox or something? Oh, or some yeah, sort of yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, um, and Catherine The Great was talking about something that the Chinese people were doing. Oh, yeah, the basically the early forms of inoculation. Yeah, that actually happened in 1000. In the year 1000, they were doing stuff like that yeah. in China. So and, and infecting yourself with a just a mild variety. Yeah. Speaking of which. Which is ballsy. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's a ballsy <laughs> go-to. <laughs> hey, guys. I got, I got an idea. <laughs> just bear with me. Just, but I'm just pretty stick with sure me. it's going to work. How, how many times did it not work until it started to work? And then we're like, okay, but I think we got... So really what we're talking about here are vaccines, right? Yeah, that's, so, that's vaccines. All right, so vaccines contain weakened or inactive antigens that cause your body to create antibodies. You Yay. want those antibodies. And um, when the antibodies are made, uh, memory cells uh, for the antibodies are also created, making it easier for your body to make those antibodies mm -hmm. the next time you deal with an infection. For being anti-body, they sure are pro-body. <laughs> well done. That's, that's well done. Um, modern vaccines. So so vaccines had um, weakened or in, inactive antigens. Mm -hmm. uh, modern vaccines actually have the blueprint for creating the antibodies instead of the antigens themselves. Ooh. And I think that's what we might have gotten injected with, with, yeah. with COVID. Just a, a COVID blueprint? Yeah, I think it's an M mRNA, um, I believe is what it is, um, for those um, for those vaccines. Okay. Um, you know, so there are viruses everywhere. We hear about them in this, all the time. In this day, yes. We, we hear about them daily now with, with COVID, but even before COVID. Uh, I mean, there's all kinds of Ebola and all this kind of, uh -huh. all these other viruses uh -huh. that, yeah. that you hear about. 
the flu is a virus. Yeah, the flu is a virus. And so you hear about them all the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so if there are a lot of viruses here, you would think there'd be a lot of viruses out in space. And guess what? Nobody's studying it. There's really only one one group of people that are studying it. Yeah. I mean, and is it that article that I... Yeah, I it you? is. It's called Astro... Um, Astro Virology. Yeah, Virology. Uh, the R is missing. Um, but uh, it's Dr. Ken Stedman at Portland State University, um, which I'm assuming is in Portland. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we didn't do a whole lot of research to say that they're maybe the only ones, but it's not like it, that. It's rare, though. It's really, I mean, I didn't know there was a thing called astrovirology, you know, yeah. which, of course, you think there would be. But there are, and I was reading in the, the article that it, it was like 10 to 100 million times, like, more, like, bacteria and, like, you know, versions of viruses and stuff than there are rest the rest of the species on Earth. Yeah. And that's just, and that's just on our planet. So when you then think about space and we're looking at exoplanets, we're looking for life out there, well, there could be time, because these things can, they're not, like, necessarily evolving to you know, life forms such as us. So there could be just a plethora of bacterium and viruses and, and yeah. all that out there. Yeah. And so, um, yeah. So we've talked about how, um, in, in the course of all these, um, cosmos, cosmos episodes, we've talked about red stars and how red stars are the easiest to make and, mm-hmm. you know, asteroids, and and they're more asteroids than planets because mm-hmm. they're easier to make. It takes less energy to yeah. just viruses would be easier to make, in my opinion. I mean, I don't know. Oh yeah, because I mean, we take a lot of energy for us. There's a lot of cells had to come together. Of, a lot of shit has had to happen over a long period of time. Where you know, like a bacterium, it doesn't really. It's a very simple organism. It doesn't need. It doesn't expend a lot. It doesn't use a lot. So you know, yeah, having to multiply is not really making a dent. And you in. know, you know what's crazy though is like we look at, like here on Earth, we look at where life exists, and it exists everywhere. Um, and it's, even it's cr- you're crawling with it. We can't see it, but we're crawling with it yeah. right now, which I don't like to think too much about. Well, don't. But think about at the bottom of um, uh, at, at the bottom of the ocean where you have those uh, those black smokers, those oh, vents. Oh yeah, yeah, the smokestacks. Yeah. Yeah, and so you have all these life forms that live around it because it's producing a lot of energy for yeah, them. Yeah, and uh, bacteria, and viruses, and things like that are living right there next to these mm-hmm. vents. And so if you can find um, life in this really um, uh, insane environment, yeah, yeah, not conducive for life as we know it, yeah. or want to experience, then there's going to be life out there in space. Yeah, or like, you know, the <clears throat> water bear. You could have like evil water bears. True. Evil killer water bears. Or tardigrades. Tardigrades, yes. I was like, God, what are they called? <laughs> the water bears. Um, yeah. But yeah, so, I mean, you could have viruses and yeah. all that living on asteroids. And, and they don't and necessarily need, like, hosts like us to, you know, find. It could be they're hosting on other bacteria. Other, you know, bacteria can make hosts out of each other. Yeah. Yeah. It's- and viruses get on them. And yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now that we've moved on into space. Yes. We're in space. We're in space. Let's talk about, um, and, and, and the idea that there, there are viruses out there. There's, there, there's got to be. Yeah. Um, you know, like what kind of crazy fucking version of smallpox do they have over in, you know, uh, I don't know, Centauri, the FB. Alpha Centauri. Kept a 453 Let's talk Star Trek. Okay. And Star Wars. I know, because you do love. Let's talk about it. I mean, are you going to start with just first contact? Because uh, well, let's would, start with first contact. Or would the Vulcans have been like, "All right, we're prepared for their viruses," and then made a? How are we shielded from their viruses? Yeah. All right. So let's talk first contact. Okay. Um, Star Trek first contact. Um, oh, Zephy Cochran, Cochran, um, hanging out. Mm-hmm. Um, he had launched. He had launched his warp 
um, ship and mm -hmm. and came back, had a big old party, mm -hmm. and Woo! the Vulcans come down. Woo! The Vulcans come down. And they're like, oh, hey. Hey, hey, how's it going? We're going to open our door, and we're going to walk out, and we're going to shake hands with you. That seems like not a good idea. It is I not mean, a good idea. I mean, we can't even shake hands with each other right now, and there needs to be that, the, that you know, hazmat suits yeah. that are in E.T. They had them in E.T. They had them in E.T., yeah. You know? Um, I just think of the movie Outbreak, but... Uh, I mean, we, we, we could talk E.T. as well. Like, they should be in these, you know... <laughs> yeah, the problem is, is, like, it... So... Especially since um, the Vulcans and Earthlings basically have a DNA kind of. I, I, I'm not Maybe saying let's shared assume, DNA. Let's assume we, they don't, though. Let's assume they, we don't know the, the plot point of explaining why everybody looks humanoid uh, well, by okay. making them share DNA. Because well, if we share DNA, then that kind of, you know, yeah, there might be new stuff that we could get that we're not accustomed to, uh, but. Because we share the same DNA, it'd be easier to then, like, make a vaccine. Whereas if it's some a completely different alien species, it would be a lot harder to um, figure out a, a oh. vaccine or something. Oh, I, I wasn't even going to get into the vaccine. Oh, oh. I was just going to say that it, it's so much easier just to transmit those diseases. Because we do have that similar starting block of, really? of the of the I dna would think it, would be, it would be easier if we don't have the same dna well okay. then i don't know <laughs> i mean the dna the dna makes the like is going to be responsible for making the proteins and make the cell membranes and stuff like that and if your if your dna is similar i guess it's like there's it's a not bridge, like there's a bridge there yeah so our dna is carbon based for the vulcans it's going to be carbon based mm -hmm. Because of the episode in the Star Trek Next Generation, um, where they spread their DNA would across all, the universe. I mean, would all across carbon, the galaxy. Would all carbon based life forms share the same DNA? You're not, it's, it's similar. Okay. I, oh, it's not sharing. It's not like where we share like 0.1% of the same DNA as you Yeah, it's not or like. Something like that or whatever. At this point in the game, it's not like humans have had sex with. Vulcans to create, okay. you know, to share that I mean, DNA. Yeah, they've been looking at us for a while. You know, they're like, okay. But at that point, <laughs> in that particular day, uh -huh. um, the DNA were, were similar. Okay, get, and so, get, if the Vulcans get, had diseases, uh -huh. and they get off that ship, if they had diseases, Vulcmidia. What? <laughs> Vulcmidia. Wow, with <laughs> straight STD on that. Um, all right, so. Um, <laughs> okay, Vulcan flu. Okay, we'll do the Vulcan flu. One of them has the Vulcan flu. Uh -huh. They open that door and they come and talk to us. Uh, they they might transmit that Vulcan mm -hmm. flu over to us, but we might we might give it right back to them. You know, Earth flu, um, <laughs> COVID. We might give them COVID. <laughs> and so, I I was thinking about this, and I would. I would think that if there was a first contact mm -hmm. between two species, mm -hmm. um, alien species, mm -hmm. there would be probably a quick die-off between the two. I would think that the, the ones that are making the first contact that are the most advanced, like they maybe have clearly thought about this and have already enacted some protective measures on themselves and maybe some unknown protective measures for us, you know, that we don't see or we don't know about, like they put some shit in the water, and so we're fine now, you know. But yeah, but the Vulcans didn't even know about us until the Vulcans were just passing through. Oh, okay, okay. The Vulcans okay. were well, passing I'm, I'm through. I'm saying if they did know about us, I guess, and had been like keeping their no. eye on us and been like, all right, no. So the as Vulcans, soon as they... <laughs> the Vulcans were passing through, passing through oh, the neighborhood. Well, they were like, oh, heck. well, has, they, have we ever lived here? No, they would have actually kept going had Cochrane not. Yeah, that's what done I'm saying. They're like, thing. oh, were they always here? Maybe yeah. we should stop by. Yep. Stop by and say hello. Yeah. Um. So they didn't really even do a lot of. Now they might have gotten back into their sh uh, ship and gone, right, scan the fuck out of me. Yeah, let me right. know what I got, what I uh -huh. pick up, and okay. then probably take care of it. But um, uh, we didn't have such a thing. But we came through okay. We did okay. With the Vulcans? Yeah, like, so the Vulcans, okay. <laughs> they left, they got back, let, let's say they got back into their ship uh -huh. and scanned themselves uh -huh. and was able to eradicate 
us giving them COVID. However, we didn't have such technology. Mm -hmm. And so when the Vulcans left, the, uh, I feel like they would have been like, hey, uh, <laughs> they would be smart enough to know not to uh, like kill us all off immediately. Like maybe they would come out in their big like suits, uh, their CDC suits, Let you know, and, and then we would be even more terrified because it would be like a alien in also CDC suit suits that we also use and be like, that's a weird coincidence. You have the same hazmat gear, but you know, maybe they do that and be like, hey, we have shit. You, you don't, we don't want to kill you all off. And that's how they come in peace by wearing CDC hazmat suits. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Brandon? Oh, God, he's on it. Yeah, he's watching. Why doesn't he? He's watching. <laughs> You're on. Okay. If, if, if you can respond. Oh, God. You can join us. Essential oils. Yes. What is it? Maybe, maybe, don't work? maybe an alien. <laughs> maybe an alien is just crystals. Uh, just uh, d just exerts, just spews, just oozes, gus oozes essential oils, and then they're fine. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Yeah, the crystals too. Well, just you know what? A first contact. All we need a little bit of sage. Light it on fire. You do a little thing like this. It's fine. It's fine. It's, it's fine. all good. It's fine. You know, there was one. Um, there was one sci-fi thing. That actually got it right, at least um, with one half of the story. Oh, yeah, War of the Worlds. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Well, we did look up some like s movies um, that dealt. There's not a lot of movies that deal no. with viruses. So War of the Worlds, um, we get that. Give them the cold. We give them the cold. We give them the common cold. We don't get anything from them. No. Uh, well, we give them the we common give them cold. The common cold, and then they die. <laughs> Then they die, and that's that's how we defeat them. Yeah. Um. Is it our heat, our tanks, and shit like that? Are what? Well, okay. In the original, in the cannons, the cannons don't work. Um. Against them, but um, because that was a technology. So at the all time. they need to do is just a little. Achoo. Yep. Just sneeze on them. Yep. Somebody sneezed on one of them, and then they died of the common cold. Um. Okay. Andromeda strain, though. Andromeda strain. What is Andromeda strain about, other than Ethan Hawke is in it? Is Ethan Hawke in it? Or am I thinking no, Gattaca? I'm thinking you're thinking Gattaca. Gattaca. <laughs> Andromeda Strain was 1971. Wait. Oh, okay. Just kidding. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, Michael Crichton um, of Jurassic Park thing. Oh, well. Wow. Yeah. Clever boy. <laughs> I'll take a drink of that. All right, so uh, Michael Crichton. He would actually, I mean, he would actually do the science research. And so the science is usually pretty generally Good. spot on. Yeah. Um, and so. Like us doing science research? Huh? Yeah. Like us doing science research? I think it's pretty spot on. It's close. I I did research. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm the only one that I did research. Um, and so with Andromeda strain, um, this basically this um, satellite or something crashes mm -hmm. on Earth and 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 kills everybody, and so um, they thought that the satellite was um, there was something from the satellite. the The original thought well, was an evil it, water bear hitched a ride and came. Yeah, the, it actually as it was coming through the atmosphere, it had picked up some um, bad viruses and stuff through the atmosphere, <laughs> landed. Up. And made people sick. However, um, you're never on it, Brandon. <laughs> Assignment, my ass. You know what? All right, here's our research. Oh, shit. We got to do a podcast today. Quick. Wikipedia. <laughs> Let's look at some stuff. I, right. just, I just enjoy having the, like, just the kind of. The conversation. The conversation and the mental thought about it. Right. Well, I, I do think we have to describe stuff. Um, yeah. But anyway, so in Andromeda Strain, what had happened was uh -huh. a, um, a a meteor basically hit the the asteroid. I mean, excuse me, the, the, satellite? the satellite and knocked it. Uh, and, and, it and the meteor had and the meteor viruses. had the viruses, Whoa. which killed everybody. <gasps> yeah. Wow. No one lived. Who, who told the tale? Um, well, you know, people people survived. Okay. <laughs> they, 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 some people did survive. Some people did so survive. So it didn't kill everybody. Didn't kill everybody. But it was a big. But it event. killed everybody. But two people in town. Um, there were two people that were in the town that survived it. Um, one of them was on some sort of medication, 
Oh, that's good. And so was able to survive it. And the other one, so he was some older guy. Uh-huh. And the second um, that survived it, I think, was a baby. It was okay. hyperventilating or something. I, I'm not entirely sure. But, uh, but was able to uh, able to survive it. That sounds um, like a really interesting uh, comedic sitcom. Yeah, well, it wasn't. But <laughs> it was an old man and the baby at the end of the old world. Old man and the baby. Um, but yeah, so that actually, actually, it mm-hmm. did pick up a, a space mm-hmm. virus. Mm-hmm. Um, and we talked about them being on little asteroids and things like that. And so, yeah. okay, satellite bumps into a meteor, a meteoroid. Mm-hmm. Some of those little space viruses transferred over. Uh, collapses, uh, crashes down on us, makes everybody sick, everybody dies. Fun times, fun times. Cool. Yeah, and okay, so, so, so that's two. What are we on? Two yeah, we're just a few. There's just only just a, a few. few. What are we I, I wrote, I wrote down some other ones. So that's in drama. Okay. Right. One. Well, if you, there we go. All right. So okay, the invasion, which is like the invasion of the body snatchers, I guess, but mm-hmm. uh, different. But not, um, and, and and it involves a fungus like alien life form, like the like with the zombie ants, you yeah. know, the fungus with the zombie ants, the fungus, the like, you know, gets in them and then it takes over them and it controls their brain and makes them fucking move and shit. So it's like that, but with aliens. <laughs> yeah, alien fungi. Alien fungi. Yeah, it, it's yeah, not a virus was... though, technically. No, it's not a virus, but I guess it's an. It, but... it shows how difficult it is to find alien virus movies, and and that's mm-hmm. because you know the setting up a, a movie. What what do people want to see? They want to see shooting aliens or they want to see us like get along and with the aliens um yeah, and i guess everybody just dying from you know you know space pop blankets isn't really yeah. i guess entertaining theater no not not as much so not as much so and so uh, when it comes to aliens i think hollywood goes hey we we need, we have to make uh but district 9 was aliens you could see and so it wasn't. Um, it wasn't. Did it have anything to do with the viruses? District Nine wasn't there. There was something though. It was I don't know. It's been a while. Right, but but you still see the aliens. It's not like uh, Andromeda Strain where you never see the aliens. Right, because it's just that microscopic. Virus. Yeah, the yeah the virus and stuff like that, like that. And so, um, but like um, so that's the invasion, which is just a remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Um, you have the last days on Mars, um, which is is more of a zombie movie, but it's also an infection um, with spores. Oh, spores! Yeah, damn spores! Damn spores! They get you every spores. time. And then spores. the electrical virus, which I don't. Yeah, I looked up the electrical virus from '99, and it's like uh, it was. It's basically like an electrical life form that um, takes over a ship or whatever, and like uses like dead humans and the technology and whatever to try and like give themselves a body basically but it was an mm. electrical sort of an electrical life form and infection so i don't know it's weird uh my mom asked good question are we contaminating space with what we have on us uh from earth uh i mean how could we not but at the same time we're trying not to um, so like every, every spacecraft that we send, uh, via satellite, rover, what have you is built in a clean room and people are wearing, you know, the full suits covering, you know, pretty much all of their bodies. And they're trying to, they're trying really hard to make sure that when we send, uh, this technology out into space that we are not bringing, you know, all of our microscopic bullshit with us all of our microscopic baggage uh, with us. And, I mean, I don't know how, what percentage of, you know, clean the spacecrafts can actually get. Um, yeah, I don't think you can get a 100% I don't think you can clean, do 100%, but, but they're trying to minimize that impact on environments such as Mars or asteroids. And Yeah, and the last thing like you that. want to do is land on Mars with a spacecraft and then have that, uh, in fact, the the local environment the local environment what, what but if, that's what we do what if what if you you're like 90% done with curiosity 
and one dude. He just accidentally, like, he just, he had an inch of his nose. He on pulled it. his mask down for, like, uh, just a second just to kind of get it, and he sneezes just right on the road, like, right, right on the rover. They got to start over. Or can they decontaminate that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's more than just a mask they're wearing. <laughs> no, I'm saying, but it's just saying. Yeah. Someone sneezed on the rover. Oh, man, we got to start all over again. Um, uh, yeah. Um, I I don't know if Brandon's saying that's exactly what probably happened. No, no, I think he's referring, uh, to, referring to something uh, else. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, um, yeah, you would have to start over. You'd have to start over? They can't just put it in a room and spray it with a bunch of shit and just like, it's fine. <laughs> well, no, no, no. I know you would spray it. Yeah, you, you'd just have to start okay. all over in a cleaning. Oh, start over meant like rebuild. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't have to From rebuild it. <laughs> scratch. No, you don't have to rebuild it. Okay. All right. Cool. <laughs> but I mean, it, yeah, it's impossible because these things, these, these uh, life forms on us and around us. They're so tiny that it's, you know, it's impossible for us to contain all of them. You oh, know, yeah, you, you can't, you basically, I mean, a pol- like, oh, it's, pol- it's uh, polio that's eradicated, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. And, I mean, that takes people getting vaccinated and creating enough herd immunity that that virus can no longer mutate and it can no longer feed on anything it has nothing it can't it can't spread and eventually um and then eventually dies out so that you don't have yeah. it at all that's why i heard hum- he heard, heard immunity I- immunity is so important and getting vaccinated if you are healthy enough to get vaccinated um that is what protects those who can't get vaccinated who are not healthy enough to get vaccinated who are immunocompromised you know mm-hmm. and so it's us doing our part not only to protect ourselves and so that we hope we have that immunity or that resistance there so that we don't get sick or get sick as to the extent of what could hospitalize us or kill us but then it's also protecting those of our community that can't and, yeah. and they can't fight for themselves, and we have to be that shield for them, which is why it's so important now during a fucking global pandemic that's been going on for two years, which it really shouldn't be in the year 20. It, we're in the 2020s, people. We almost have flying cars. We're getting there. I mean, we shouldn't we shouldn't have this situation last so long. No. Um, and so it's so important that everybody just does their part listening and tr- and trusting their medical professionals and the virologists and the epidemiologists these yeah. professionals um and getting your vaccines and your boosters and wearing your face masks still even if you are vaccinated and boosted yeah. you know and just keeping that protection when you're out in public for yourself and for others i mean that's it's your responsibility as a human being on the planet earth to your other fellow human beings right and so like if you can get vaccinated get fucking and you vaccinated. don't get vaccinated you're an asshole you're an asshole you are an asshole and uh, i'll just say you're an asshole that's all but you're an asshole and um and if you're scared if you're scared talk to your doctor listen to your doctor get a second opinion Listen to your doctor. Yeah, look, 60, like, <laughs> six, over sixty percent of this country might be set. I don't, I don't know what it you is. You might get anymore. a swollen armpit. It's fine. But it goes we'll, away. Let, let's let's just be optimistic and say seventy percent of this of of the American population has been vaccinated. They aren't dying, and so at this point, you should see that it actually is safe. But I, but I know you'll say it's fake news and all that kind of stuff. But go fuck yourself. Um, yeah, and so get vaccinated. But I know everybody listening to this um, is vaccinated. What if we pretend? What if we market it? And it's because it's all about marketing, really, nowadays to these fucking people to this planet of weird fucking humans. Uh, anyway, what if we market it as like as like an invade an alien invasive virus? Then maybe people will be like, oh, because it's aliens. And everybody's scared of aliens. 
So maybe that'll work because just, you know, doing your part for your community and protecting each other, that's a no go. Yeah, no, I think I think you have to you have to you're gonna have to frame some argument along the lines of freedom. Um, because it's all about freedom at this point. What whatever whatever this uh freedom argument means. Unless you're um, a woman in Texas. Yeah, it's it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. It's the the only reason why it's a freedom argument is because um <laughs> <laughs> It is hard, Jack. That's it's hard. It's hard, and mm-hmm. if I had just not it's, looked at it's the hard comments and blue, <laughs> um, yeah. So it, it it is really hard for them to uh, fuck themselves with their tiny dicks. Yes, I agree. One hundred thousand trillion percent. Um, I, I don't even remember what I was saying. I don't what know. I, I don't was know. So but, taken. but you know, we can't we can't handle. <laughs> In this day and age of the future, where we can just ha- do something with this and then food shows up at our door. I don't know. Like, in this day and age, uh, we can't handle a virus as a species. Then there is no way we're handling aliens no. as a species. No. And aliens come with clearly a whole host of of problems that aren't just are they mean or not uh what resources do they want now you also have to think about oh shit what space viruses and bacteria Mm -hmm. do they have um because that could be a potential uh you know just wipe out event just to encounter any sort of alien species right even if it's like even if it's like like say like a i don't know a, a, a meteor that knocked off of a Mars or another a moon of the solar system that happened to have a little stowaway with it mm-hmm. and then hit the Earth and somehow survived because it's like an evil water bear and then an explorer found it but then they got infected and they don't know and then they meet up with other dudes and then everybody else starts getting infected and they don't know because it's it's just a little tag along virus from fucking Europa. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but you know Premise what? of a movie right there. <laughs> We're going to talk more about aliens and stuff. In, in the in hangover. hangover. Yes. I'm like, i got to wrap this up. I know. I was trying to, but I was really on a roll with my plot line, and I, it was developing, and I just... So, um, we've talked about viruses, and um, we actually need to study space viruses more. And which yeah, is a, astrovirology. Get yeah, into it. Yeah, which is a new thing in the field of astronomy. I mean, that's fun. Yeah. Like new fields of shit. That's like pioneer. It is pioneer. Pioneering shit. So thank you for joining us for our episode on uh, on viruses here on Cosmos with Cosmos. Um, please uh, stick around for the hangover. And um, everybody stay safe, stay healthy. If you're not vaccinated, get vaccinated. Um, if you are whether you are or not, please uh, wear your mask and wear the mask. And that way you can pr- help prevent your fellow neighbors from getting uh, sick with COVID and, and other diseases. Yeah, just be, just be a good person. Be a decent person. Yeah. Don't be a dick. Don't be, is what we don't be a fucking dick. <laughs>